I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's video is for the Iris Mini Crossbody from the Designer Acquaint Stitch. This is another free pattern, and I will have the information linked in my description. This pattern sews up really quick, and in my first sample, I did all cork. In this tutorial, I'm actually going to use all vinyl. Now let's talk about the pieces we are going to need to complete this bag. We're going to start with the interior pieces. I'm choosing to use a waterproof canvas, therefore I do not need to interface mine. If you're using cotton woven, make sure you use a light to medium weight interfacing on yours. We will also have one zipper pocket piece. The next thing we want to talk about is our flap. We will have an exterior flap and our interior flap or the lining flap. Again, I'm using waterproof canvas for this piece. No, no interfacing attached. I'm using a vinyl from Deja Designs on this bag. I'm choosing to add a layer of Decaville Light to my flap. There is a separate pattern piece for your interfacing. You can use Decaville Light or foam your preference. So it will be kept out of your seam allowance. If you're using Decaville Light, you can go ahead and attach it now. The foam, you can attach it now, or you can wait until after you sew the flap right sides together, and then you can slip it down in between. As you can see, the flap is here on the front of the bag, and it does attach on the back. Now let's go over the additional pattern pieces that make up the front and the back of the bag. When we look at our front, we have a center panel and two side panels. So here is my front panel piece. And then here are my two side panel pieces. These are going to fit like this to create this front portion. We want to make sure we cut the side panel pieces and have them mirrored. Then we will have a bottom for the front and a bottom for the back. A lot of people choose to make this bottom piece, this piece, a contrast so you have a nice difference um, visually in your bag. Mine will be all the same. Since I'm using the vinyl, I do not need to add SF-101 to any of these pieces. I will assemble these pieces together first, and then I will choose to either add a Decaville light or a foam to help stabilize it and give it a little bit more weight. I will let you know that in this bag, the cork, I did not use foam or Decaville light. It stands up fine, it's a little smushy, but it stands up fine and looks great. Once I sew this together, I may choose to do the same thing with this bag. I'll just wait to see how it feels and see what I like. So this is your front of the bag. Now let's turn it around and look at the back of this bag. We have our flap attached here, and then we have our middle piece right here for our back. And then we're gonna have another bottom piece for our bag. Again, this could be a contrast if you want. And then we have our back top. The back top right in between here is where our flap will go. So when we open it up, you will see the back top there. That is how we will attach and hide that raw seam to this bag. So this is the back. The only other things you will need will be your side connectors and your strap. Since I'm using a raw edge material, this is what my two strap connectors look like, and it will actually wrap around. Also on your pattern piece for your strap connectors, there will be dots to show you where to make your hole punches for your rivets. For my strap, I'm undecided just yet. I have not decided if I'm going to make my strap out of my vinyl or I will use a piece of webbing. Either way, I will figure that out at the end because we do not attach the strap to the bag. It will just connect with connectors. The first thing we'll do is we will go ahead and take out our two strap connector pieces. Since mine are raw edge, what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away all around the perimeter of the raw edge. And then after that, I can do my hole punches and that will be the completed part for these. We do not need to do anything else. We can set these aside. Now that I have my two side connectors top stitched, I'm just going to set those aside until we finish the bag. 
The next thing I want to do is I'm going to pull out one lining panel and the lining pocket piece or the zipper pocket piece. The first thing you'll do is you will take this lining piece and you're going to fold it right sides together and make a crease in the middle. I just do a finger crease and that is the long sides are being folded together in half. So once you have that crease, you are going to measure down a half of an inch and you are going to draw a six inch box. So once you have your box drawn, then you're going to open this piece back up. We are going to then measure down an inch and a quarter from the top is where this crease is going to go. Not your box, but your crease you made. You will then center it on this lining panel. So now that you have that clipped in place with your measurements, just like any zipper pocket, I'm going to sew two lines along the long sides of that box. I'm going to back stitch at the front and the end. I personally do not sew these short ends. You can if you prefer to do that. I'm going to go ahead and take this over the machine and sew directly on those two long lines I just drew. Now that I have both lines sewn, backstitched well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along this line that I drew that is in the middle of those two lines I stitched. When I get to these triangles, I'm going to stop at that point and then I will cut to angle towards the stitches I sewed, but I will not cut through those stitches. I like to fold my lining in half. That's how I make my first cut to cut through the two layers and then I open it up and I finish cutting along that line. Now what you're going to do is you're going to push your lining through. Something else I do where I do not sew on the sides, I open this lining up and I get those two points to make sure they're coming out. I will actually sew over these triangles to secure them down whenever I, whenever I stitch my zipper in place. I now have everything clipped. So I grabbed a number five zipper and pull and put that on there. I'm going to go ahead and take these clips out. And I do not add any double-sided tape, but you can definitely add a row of double-sided tape to make this an easier So but Whenever you attach your zipper to your lining panel, what you do is you make sure your zipper teeth are in the middle of that opening, and then you just sew a perimeter around that box on all four sides. You sew an eighth of an inch away from the folded edges to encase that zipper onto your lining panel. So now I have my zipper attached to the lining panel. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to fold the lining down so that they meet at the bottom. I'm going to just sew along the sides. I'm not sure of the seam allowance. I'm going to do it a quarter of an inch. It won't really matter too much. But when I get to the bottoms, I'm going to make sure I backstitch really well here and I will leave this part open. This is how we will turn our bag later. So I will lay the lining down on the machine bed and pull back the lining to sew it this way. If you have zipper overhang like I do, you can trim it now. I never measure the zip zippers, I just make sure they're longer than the opening of the zipper pocket. So now your pocket is complete, we're going to set this piece aside. Now we are going to start working on the front of the bag. 
I'm going to pull out that front center piece. I went ahead and attached my magnetic snap. I used the pattern piece for the placement. I want to make sure you understand that it is not centered, so make sure that you have your magnetic snap towards the lower part of the center panel and not up here when you're sewing everything together. What we're going to do is we're going to take our two side panels and we're going to attach the straight edge of the side panel to the straight edge of our center panel. I'm just going to put a few clips in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other side panel. They are going to be right sides together, both side panels, matching up both straight edges. This is going to be sewn on down each side, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once we have these side panels sewn on 3 eighths of inch seam allowance, what I'm going to do is I am going to open it up and I am going to butterfly the seams open. That means I'm going to have one part of the seam laying on each side. And I'm just going to finger press that down. I'm going to go ahead and add a clip to hold those seams in place. So I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from both sides of this seam. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the bottom to the front panel. This is the way we want it to look at the end. The notches will be down at the bottom. So with the notches at the bottom, we're going to just flip it up and clip it in place. So this is how, this is how it will look. You can actually see here that there is a little cut here that goes straight and then it flares out. And the flaring out part is going to be more at the top. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew all along this bottom edge with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance again. Now that I've got this sewn together, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the sides. I'm going to open up the seams and butterfly them again. Of course, you do not have to do this step. It's optional, just like the way it looks. Your side seams will be a little thick and bulky at this point, so you will have to be even more cautious whenever you're sewing or top stitching to make sure that they lay flat while you're doing this. Again, we're going to top stitch on either side of this seam an eighth of an inch away, and I'm going to use my finger to run across to make sure that that seam stays flat and I can get both sides of it evenly. The front of the bag is complete. I'm going to set this aside. So now we are going to sew up our flap. I went ahead and attached my magnetic snap to my lining piece, interfaced it with a piece of decoville line and tape for security purposes. Now I'm going to place these flaps right sides together. I'm going to clip around and then what I'll do is I'll sew the sides and the bottom with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to leave this top open. That is how we'll turn this flap. I sewed the exterior and lining pieces of the flap right sides together, 3 eighths of an inch. I turned and now I'm going to top stitch. I put a couple clips in place just to kind of help the edges to lay flat. Filling this flap with the Decaville light inside it really feels nice. It feels really good and stable. So I'm definitely going to use Decaville light on my exterior pieces after I sew them together. What I will do now is go ahead and top stitch along these three edges here an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge that we just sewed and then I'll baste my top closed. This will complete our flap.
My flap is completed, now I'm going to set it aside. Now it's time to start working on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my back middle and I have my center marked with a clip. I'm going to take my flap, I have the center of it with marked with a clip at the top. I'm going to place them right sides together, matching up the center marks. It is the top edge of our flap. It is the top edge of our back middle. We're just going to base this in place. So I'm just going to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance at this point. Now that this is based in place, I'm going to pull out my back top. Whenever we go to attach this, we can line it up and we can see that that longer portion is going to be what fits against our back middle. So I orientate it that way, and then I just take it and flip it down to make sure I have everything lined up properly. I'm going to clip that in place. Now that this is clipped in place, I'm going to sew across this top edge with the full seam allowance of 3 8 of an inch. Now what you're going to do is you're going to flip your flap up, and you can see that seam allowance is already wanting to go down. You're going to use your fingers to help push it down. And then, well, I'm just going to put some clips so I can hold it up and show you. So with the flap up, seam allowance goes down, and we're going to top stitch along that back middle an eighth of an inch away from the seam we just sewed. Last step now is should be the last piece of the exterior you have besides your cross body connectors is your bottom. Just like we did with the front, the notched edges will be at the bottom. So we'll orientate it the way it's going to look at the end and then we just flip it up so it's right sides together. Go ahead and clip this in place and we're going to sew this again 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that I got that sewed together, I am going to butterfly that seam once again and sew an eighth of an inch away on both sides of where I just sewed. So both sides of that folded edge or that seam. Let me clip this and I will show you what it looks like. Mine is not wanting to stay open. I'll just have to make sure whenever I'm at the machine that I'm using my fingers constantly to smooth it down. But you are going to top stitch on both sides of that seam to hold that seam allowance in place. This is optional. You can just do it one way if you want, but I'm going to do it both and have that neat little look there. My back is now complete. Now that we have the front and the back completed, your next step is to decide what kind of stabilizer or extra interfacing you want to use on these exterior pieces. I'm choosing to use a Decaville light, so I went ahead and used my pattern piece to get the Decaville light cut, and I'm keeping it out of my seam allowances, and I've infused that onto these pieces. You could use foam, you could keep it in the seam allowance, it depends on your preference and your machine. So let's go over the pieces we have at this point. Our front with our magnetic snap, our back with the flap and the magnetic snap attached to the interior, the lining with the zipper and the lining without a zipper, and then we also have our two strap connectors, and you may already have your strap made, I do not. I'm going to deviate from the pattern a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is the same steps now for both of the exterior and lining. I'm going to clip the bottoms together. I'm clipping these right sides together, matching up the bottoms, and I'm going to sew along this bottom line edge 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to also go ahead and clip right here 
and do the same for the lining. After I get these pieces sewn together at the bottom, then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to stitch on either sides of that seam to kind of have that bottom to lay a little bit flatter. Back stitch well whenever you're doing this step because we will be boxing our corners and it'll make it easier. So now that I have the bottom stitch, I'm just going to open up, butterfly that seam again, and top stitch on both sides of that line we just sewed just to help everything lay nice and neatly. I chose to top stitch this bottom piece from the wrong side of the bag. It was just a little bit easier for me and I wasn't as worried about making sure everything was straight. I knew I could watch that and get that perfectly lined up. So that's how I did the exterior. I'm going to do the same thing for the interior. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip both the exterior and the lining right sides together. I'm going to fold my flap inside there and I'm just going to clip these edges and make them flush together. I'm going to do that on both sides of the exterior and the lining. On my exterior, I have these two side seams that are really important to me. I want them to match up nicely so whenever I turn this bag, they flow really well around all the sides. So I use these plastic clips to clip them in place so it holds them a little bit securely, more securely. Something else you could do is you could just start stowing right here and just lock these in place. Just do a basting stitch here. But you can see we're going to be working on the sides on the exterior and the sides of the lining. We're going to make sure we back stitch really well at the tops and the bottoms and we're going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that I've got those sides stitched, I'm not going to trim them down just yet. The main thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I get a really nice box corner. Sometimes when you trim down your seams too soon, it's hard to get that perfect box corner. So the way I do my corners is I open up the bag and I start in the middle and flatten that down. If you start pulling right here, sometimes you won't get that perfect shape, but if you can push down in the middle, you'll see it wants to go there anyway, and then you can just slide that back in. It's really important to have the middle come down because that's the way the bag is going to lay whenever, or sit, maybe we should say. And so then I can just come in here and straighten out those sides and get that to fit in nicely. We want those middle seams to fit in really well. I go ahead and I kind of smash that a little bit to get that crease there. Oh. And I grab a clip and start clipping those spots. I will look at this to make sure everything looks good and that I don't need to do any trimming or adjusting before I stitch it. So now I'm just going to sew along. I'm going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to flatten that bag down so I can definitely make sure I sew straight across that edge. I have my exterior done. I went ahead and trimmed the bottoms there and I'm going to trim along the side seams just a little, maybe a bit to get it down to about a fourth of an inch. I don't want to trim it too much because I'm going to be able to open that up and flare out the side seams so I can nestle it in with the lining. So if you're a little uncomfortable with that, you do not have to trim down your seams on that part. Let's go ahead and repeat those same steps to box the corners for the lining. Okay. 
Now that we got everything sewn, let's put this together. Let's go ahead and flip the exterior right sides out, but leave our lining wrong sides out. I have my exterior turned right side out. Now I'm going to take this exterior and I'm going to put it inside my interior. I'm going to put this zipper pocket where it has our turning hole along the back with the flap of the bag. Now, in the pattern, she does have that bottom lift open at this step. That is convenient whenever you're putting this in here because you can even pull out part of your bag through the opening. I'm just going to tuck mine in there and pull it up to get that to match. But if you want to do it that way, you can for sure. It's a great way to do it. Okay, I have everything clipped together. The exterior and the linings right sides together. I'm going to sew 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. I'm going to trim that down to about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm just going to berth it through the hole and then we will be ready to top stitch and have our bag completed. The last thing we have to decide on is that strap. I sewed around the perimeter with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I did try to make sure that I opened up the seams um, on these corners so that it just fit and nestled in there really well. I'm going to just trim this down a little bit, maybe about a fourth of an inch and then I'm going to berth it through this hole. When I start berthing the back, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to grab that exterior corner and start there. If I can get both corners out, that's great. I know the rest of the bag's gonna flow easily. My flap is coming with those <laughs> corners, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and push the lining into the bag roll down my seams and clip all along the top of this portion of the bag. I have the top clipped. I pushed the lining down and rolled the seam so only on the outside is my exterior showing. But I'm going to keep my flap down. I do not want to catch it at all. I'm actually going to start here on this side and go all around the bag and try to get everything taken care of. An eighth of an inch all around the top of the bag. Go ahead and close up that opening in the bag and get that taken care of. So I'm just going to pull it out and I'm just going to push it in the edges, the raw edges in, pull on the sides to get it to go nice and flush and flat. Put a couple clips there. Okay, the zipper pocket is closed. I went ahead and decided to use the pattern instructions to make the stripe instead of using webbing. So I cut the piece of vinyl 4 inches wide and the length I think was around 50 inches. I folded it like a piece of double fold bias tape, sewed down both long edges, and then attached two 1 inch swivel hooks to the bottom. Now the last thing we need to do is to get the stripe connectors on the bag. I'm using a one inch D-ring and then I just folded the connectors in half wrong sides together and put a clip down there at the bottom. You have a marking on your pattern piece as to where you punch your hole. I'm going to use a handheld hole punch that I got from Amazon several years ago. I can't even remember how much it was, but I think it was under $20. And I'm just making a hole there on both pieces. And what we're going to do is from this top, we're going to measure down half of an inch from the top of the bag. And then your side seam, you're just going to go in an eighth of an inch. I'm going to make my mark there, and then I'll use my hole punch to punch a hole for the connector. I'm going to go through all the layers because it's going to wrap around. Now that I have the hole punch, I'm going to feed a rivet through one side of my connector 
open it up, push that rivet post through. So I will get it to come through on the lining. I'm going to make sure that D-ring is on there. It fell off. And then wrap that connector around and put it on the back side of that. Okay, so now I got that on in place, I'm going to grab the back of my rivet and just snap that in. I'm not going to set this rivet on the camera. I'll have I have my rivet press over there. So I'm just going to repeat this for the other side. So now I have both of my rivets in place with my connectors and my strap done so my bag is completely finished and put together. I love the way this looks. This pattern is so much fun and the vinyl is from Deja Designs and it really gives it a really nice feel. I'm going to be doing more free pattern tutorials on my channel but I'm also going to be doing a couple of new release patterns that are coming out soon. So by the end of January, February you will see some new patterns that will not be free here on the channel, but I will continue to do free patterns throughout the year just because I like free patterns. If you like this, please let me know if you have any suggestions or comments or anything you'd like to see me do differently on my channel. Let me know that too. I definitely want to continue to improve and I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much and I hope you guys have a great day.